and thank you for joining me here. I'm Don Ma. First off, let's get through some big China news today. Chinese former Premier Li Keqiang has died of a heart attack at 68, uh, barely seven months after retiring from a decade in office during which his reformist star had dimmed. Here's more. Former Chinese Premier Li Keqiang died at 68 on Friday of a sudden heart attack. Li's retirement in March followed a decade in office, during which his influence on economic reform significantly dimmed. Once a top contender for Communist Party leadership, he was sidelined by President Xi Jinping. Li's vision for economic reform, often called economics, faced challenges as Xi favored more state control. His death is being widely mourned on Chinese social media, with many expressing shock and grief with some saying it signaled the end of an era. Wen Tui Song is a political scientist at the Australian National University. So I think for many in China, they will remember Li Keqiang as that down-to-earth premier who's always having an eye for the little guys and the, the average common man on the street. Li was born in Anhui province, a poor farming area in eastern China, and had humble beginnings. He had to tour it in the fields during the Cultural Revolution. While studying law at Peking University, he befriended pro-democracy advocates, some of whom later challenged party control. He was known for being pragmatic in economic policies, with a focus on reducing the wealth gap and providing affordable housing. And U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and China's top diplomat are meeting in Washington as concerns continue to grow over the Israel-Hamas war. This latest round of diplomacy comes just days before the U.S. says a Chinese fighter jet came within feet of a U.S. air bomber. Here's more on the close encounter. U.S. Indo-Pacific Command announced on Thursday that a Chinese fighter jet got within 10 feet of a U.S. Air Force B-52 bomber that was conducting a routine mission over the South China Sea on Tuesday. That was a really close call, and the U.S. said in its statement that the Chinese pilot was, quote, flying with uncontrolled excessive speed, flying below, in front of, and within 10 feet of the B-52, putting both aircraft in danger of collision. Now, this incident is part of a series of recent incidents where Chinese fighter aircraft have tried to intercept U.S. military aircraft conducting missions in international airspace in the vicinity and over the South China Sea. And the U.S. has said that these incidents are getting increasingly common. According to the top official for uh, security of the Indo-Pacific at the Pentagon, he said, quote, since the fall of 2022, we have seen more than 180 such, such incidents by the Chinese Air Force, and he said that it is a centralized and concerted campaign to perform these risky behaviors in order to co coerce a change in lawful U.S. operational activity. Essentially, the message from the Pentagon here is that the Chinese are trying to intimidate the U.S. and its allies out of operating over uh, this international airspace over the South China Sea. Now, all of this comes as President Biden is expected to meet with China's foreign minister on Friday. The National Security Advisor is also expected expected to meet with him and Secretary of State Antony Blinken uh, had scheduled meetings with the Chinese foreign minister on Thursday. So it remains unclear whether he is going to bring up these Chinese uh, maneuvers with uh, the Chinese foreign minister, but it is something that the U.S. military has been trying to communicate with their Chinese military uh, uh, counterparts, but they have been unable to get through because those counterparts, they are simply refusing uh, to answer the phone. In a historic trip, California's governor visits China's Great Wall and an EV company, the one he purchased masks from in a controversial contract during COVID. We hear more from NTD's David Lamb. Dubbed the Great Wall Climate Dialogue, California Governor Gavin Newsom met with leaders of five Chinese provinces and the U.S. ambassador to China Thursday and toured the Great Wall of China. At the end of the day, a climate agreement was renewed with Beijing to reduce air pollution and emissions. It also includes promoting the exchange of scientific and technical information through visits and meetings. Congresswoman Michelle Steele stated the Chinese Communist Party is the biggest polluter on Earth and that no one should follow their lead. During Newsom's week-long international trip, the Democratic governor also visited electric car maker BYD, 
getting behind the wheel of a BYD vehicle. California Globe reported this is the company that Newsom awarded over $1.4 billion for masks during the pandemic. Controversy buzzed around the contract in 2020, including rapidly spending taxpayer funds and lawmakers questioning the governor's authority. A portion of the masks were initially shipped before fully receiving health certification. And on Wednesday, Chinese officials reportedly blocked American media from attending the surprise meeting with China leader and CCP head Xi Jinping, while allowing Chinese reporters inside. Newsom and Xi's meeting comes amid tense U.S.-China relations, after Newsom said they talked about fentanyl, climate issues, and economics. David Lamb, Entity News, California. And now just a quick recap of markets. U.S. stocks on Thursday tumbled. It was dragged by tech and tech-adjacent mega cap shares as investors digested mixed quarterly earnings and signs of economic resiliency, which could encourage the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates at a restrictive level longer than expected. Here are the details. Wall Street closed lower on Thursday, dragged down by tech and other mega cap shares amid fresh signs the Federal Reserve could keep interest rates higher for longer. The Dow dropped about three quarters of a percent, the S&P 500 shed nearly 1.2 percent, and the Nasdaq plunged one and three quarters percent. The Nasdaq was weighed down by the magnificent seven group of momentum stocks in the face of murky earnings guidance and a high rate environment. The market is reflecting disillusionment. George Ball is chairman of Sanders Morris Harris. It's reflecting both disillusionment in the slow rate of growth in their revenues on the one hand, and some degree of realization that the uh, nearly 25% increase in the NASDAQ driven entirely by the Magnificent Seven, may have been overdone. So one dose of reality, one dose of disappointment, and that's what's driving the tech stocks and the market down today. A swath of robust data on Thursday included a 4.9 percent quarterly annualized jump in third quarter GDP, the strongest reading in nearly two years, feeding investor worries about restrictive Fed policy. Among individual movers, shares of Amazon rose more than 3 percent in extended trading after the e-commerce giant reported better-than-expected quarterly revenue. Meta platforms beat third-quarter revenue and profit expectations, but said spending next year will exceed analysts' forecast and suggested the Israel-Hamas conflict could dampen fourth-quarter sales. Its shares fell more than 3.5 percent. From the Magnificent Seven to the Old Guard, IBM jumped nearly 5 percent following its consensus-beating quarterly report. And UPS lowered its revenue forecast for 2023, sending its shares down nearly 6 percent. And the U.S. economy grew faster than expected in the third quarter, again defying dire warnings of a recession. It was buoyed by a robust consumer spending amid a resilient labor market. Let's take a look. The U.S. economy grew at its fastest pace in nearly two years in the third quarter, once again defying dire warnings of a recession. That's according to the Commerce Department's advance estimate on Thursday. Gross domestic product increased at an annualized rate of 4.9 percent last quarter, blowing past the 4.3 percent GDP estimate forecast by economists polled by Reuters. Robust consumer spending fueled growth amid a resilient labor market, with businesses restocking warehouses and store shelves to meet strong demand. Consumer spending accounts for more than two-thirds of U.S. economic activity. The economy was also spurred by a rebound in residential investment after nine straight quarterly declines. While the strong GDP pace is likely not sustainable, it showcased the economy's stamina despite aggressive interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve to tame inflation. But growth could slow in the fourth quarter due to several factors, including the United Auto Workers strikes and the resumption of student loan repayments for millions of Americans. 
And the U.S. isn't backing away from Ukraine aid. It's sending $150 million worth of military equipment. The new package announced yesterday by Secretary of State Antony Blinken mostly consists of ammunition and rockets. Specifically, it includes munitions for surface-to-air missile systems and high-mobility artillery rocket systems. Stinger anti-aircraft missiles are also part of the aid. The Pentagon is also sending more than 2 million rounds of small arms ammunition and night vision devices. In controversy in Los Angeles, a labor union is accusing hotels of hiring illegal immigrants amidst a worker strike. Into these Stephanie Sakal reports. The unit here, Local 11 Union, claims that there's a, quote, exploitation of unhoused refugees. People from a skid row shelter in Los Angeles have reportedly been hired to work in city hotels, while over 15,000 hotel workers have been on a strike since July. The striking workers are demanding better wages and working conditions. It's outrageous that Santa Monica, Santa Monica hotels may have resorted to exploiting the desperation of recent immigrants. At the same time, their current employees, many of whom also immigrated to this country, fight for living wages and safe working conditions. Hotels like Four Points by Sheraton, La Meridian Delfina Santa Monica, and the Holiday Inn LAX are facing these accusations. A young man who came from Venezuela to seek a better quality of life found himself with heavy workloads and long hours. I didn't even know which agency was hiring, how much I was going to earn, how many hours I was going to work, much less my rights as a worker. Here I worked without breaks, without permission to eat, doing the work of three or four people. I then went to work at another hotel where they hired me to wash dishes, but they always made me clean bathrooms during my work shift, something I felt violated hygiene protocols. At the end of my job, I received a check without any information on how much I earned per hour. This has launched an investigation into working conditions for illegal immigrants hired at hotels. We're going to make sure that this is investigated thoroughly. Uh, it will be a fair and impartial investigation. But we want to make sure that those that are vulnerable are being provided the support that the laws of this country provide. Some are reportedly asylum seekers with temporary protected status and work permits. But unions condemn this practice. Behind me is the Holiday Inn Hotel near LAX, one of the many hotels involved in the scandal. The Los Angeles City Council is considering suing Texas over busing migrants to the city. Stephanie Sakal, NTD News, Los Angeles. The interest rate on the most popular U.S. home loan last week jumped to the highest since September 2000, marking its seventh straight weekly increase and driving mortgage applications to a 28-year low. This is according to a survey on Wednesday. Here's more. Janet Jackson was at the top of the U.S. pop charts. Bill Clinton was wrapping up his second term as U.S. president, and computer users all over the world had put the Y2K scare in the rearview mirror. It was September 2000, which was the last time the interest rate on the most popular U.S. home loan hit 7.9 percent until last week. That's according to a survey out Wednesday from the Mortgage Bankers Association. It showed the average contract rate for a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage rose for the seventh straight week to its highest in more than 23 years. That has driven mortgage applications to a 28-year low. Economists say higher rates are keeping prospective home buyers out of the market. The cost of borrowing to buy a house has risen, even as the Federal Reserve has put its inflation-fighting rate hike campaign on pause. One bright spot in the housing market is new home sales. A separate report out Wednesday revealed they surged more than 12 percent last month, helped by a chronic shortage of previously owned homes, though they represent only a small percentage of total home sales. And Ford Motor on Thursday withdrew its full-year results forecast due to uncertainty over the pending ratification of its deal with the United Auto Workers Union and warned of continued pressure on electric vehicles, sending shares of the company down more than 4% after hours. Take a look. Ford has a deal to end the six-week strike at its factories. 
but it's still not sure how the coming months are going to pan out. For one thing, the agreement still has to be ratified by members of the United Auto Workers Union. On Thursday, the auto giant withdrew its full-year results forecast, partly as a consequence. The deal with the UAW included pay rises of 25% phased in over the coming years. Union chief Sean Fain said it was a big win for workers. We told Ford to pony up, and they did. But Ford says the agreement will add significantly to its labour costs by up to $900 per vehicle. The firm is also grappling with how to make money on electric cars. Over the latest quarter, it lost around $36,000 on every one it made. Chief Executive Jim Farley says Ford will slow the ramp-up of EV output in response. Instead, the firm will shift investment to commercial vehicles and increase production of hybrids. Ford's third-quarter earnings per share of $0.39 cents fell well short of analyst forecasts, with revenue also lower than expected. Shares in the firm fell over 4% in U.S. after-hours trade. Meanwhile, Mercedes-Benz said a brutal electric vehicle market of heavy price cuts and supply chain issues meant it would likely hit the lower end of its 12 to 14 percent adjusted return on sales forecast for the cars division. This is as third quarter's earnings fell. Have a look at the details. Mercedes-Benz says the market for electric vehicles is getting brutal and it warns that could bite into profit margins over the coming months. The luxury car maker on Thursday posted a near 7% drop in pre-tax earnings. They sank to just over $5 billion in the third quarter. Mercedes said fierce price competition and supply chain issues were making the EV market a tough battle. The company says some rivals are selling electric cars for less than traditionally powered models, even though they cost more to make. Chief Financial Officer Harold Wilhelm said the status quo could not be sustainable for the industry. Mercedes shares fell around 5% in early trade following the warning. Carmakers from Ford to Tesla have been slashing prices this year in a bid to prop up demand. Mercedes has largely refrained from following suit, but says inflation and other factors weighed on earnings over recent months. That echoes comments earlier in the week from Porsche, which said the luxury sector wouldn't be immune to global economic worries. On a more positive note, Mercedes said the industry was beyond the worst on inflation and energy costs. And Amazon announced that growth in its cloud business is stabilizing as they signaled new deals, but warned that consumers remain wary about spending going into the holiday quarter. Here's more. Amazon is in wary mood ahead of the key holiday shopping season. The e-commerce titan said Thursday that consumers were being cautious about spending. Shoppers are trading down where possible and hunting down deals. The company forecasts sales of up to $167 billion for the coming quarter, with the lower end of its possible range well below analyst expectations. There were few signs of trouble over the quarter just gone, however. Amazon reported a 13% jump in revenue for the period, beating analyst estimates. It said it saw strong demand in categories like beauty and health. The cloud computing division, Amazon Web Services, also just beat forecasts. Chief Executive Andy Jassy says the unit is picking up the pace of signing new deals. That comes after several quarters when sales growth had flagged. AWS is battling rival Microsoft to win business driven by new AI services. Amazon shares ricocheted in after-hours trading following the mixed outlook. They rose and fell before finally settling 5% higher. Meta platforms beat expectations for third quarter profit and revenue on Wednesday, helped by adjusted drive and recovery in digital advertising ahead of the holiday season. Here are the details. Facebook and Instagram parent Meta has seen its most profitable quarter in years. That was thanks to cost control and a recovery in digital advertising ahead of the holiday season. Revenue also soared past expectations. The three months to September rose 23% to over $34 billion, 
half a billion more than what analysts expected. CEO Mark Zuckerberg promised 2023 would be Meta's year of efficiency, and it appears to be paying off. Its earnings report on Wednesday showed expenses cut by a few billion dollars. Zuckerberg said in a conference call that it would push hiring needs on non-AI roles to next year and deprioritize any non-AI projects. The company has been scrambling to update its data centers after falling behind adopting AI-friendly hardware and software systems. Now Zuckerberg says artificial intelligence will be its biggest investment in 2024. Meta has shared 21,000 jobs since late last year, mostly non-engineering roles. It's been climbing back from a bruising 2022 when investors fled as the company poured billions into Metaverse products and as ad money dried up after the pandemic. This past quarter, however, sales were boosted by advertisers banking on holiday season shopping sprees. Meta's ad views increased by 31% compared to last year's third quarter. Market research insider intelligence believes global digital ad spending to hit over $667 billion next year. It says Meta is on strong footing thanks to its effective execution and cost control. And it seems like more Americans are celebrating Halloween this year and spending a record-breaking amount of money on the spooky holiday. Here's five tips to celebrate without scaring your budget. A spooky and pricey holiday. Total Halloween spending is expected to reach a record $12.2 billion this 2023. That's according to an annual survey from the National Retail Federation. But experts say you can still have a fun All Hallows Eve without overspending. Well, you definitely want to be the house with the good candy, <laughs> right? Jessica Allen from Living Well Spending Less has five tips to help you save money. The first step is to make a budget and stick to it. It doesn't take a lot of time to do this, 10, 15 minutes. According to the NRF survey, the average consumer plans to spend a record $108.24 and the biggest increase in spending came from costumes. To save, Allen recommends reaching out to your community on social media or within your neighborhood and swapping costumes. There is no reason that you can't go cheaper or even no cost at all on costumes. When it comes to candy, Alan says don't wait until the last minute to shop to avoid impulsively buying items right off the shelf. The NRF says total spending on decorations is expected to reach nearly $4 billion this year. So how do you trim that cost? Resist the urge to get into a decor contest in your neighborhood. Use what you have. Don't go overboard. And if you're hosting a Halloween party, go potluck. Who can get the snacks? Who can get the ice? Who can get the drinks? Combine those receipts and split the cost evenly. And with Halloween approaching, it's important to know safe and kid-friendly spots for trick-or-treating and where to see some of the most creative jack-o'-lanterns. NTD's Christina Corona has more from the Pumpkin Patch. Halloween is the holiday of thrills and chills, but to celebrate the spooky season without any real scares, ensuring safety during trick or treating is absolutely essential. Chamberofcommerce.org ranked the safest U.S. cities to trick or treat based on factors such as crime rates, pedestrian safety, and law enforcement presence. The top five safest cities to trick or treat in the U.S. are Naperville, Illinois, Gilbert, Arizona, Frisco, Texas, Sugarland, Texas, and Cary, North Carolina. They analyzed data from over 300 U.S. cities using five key metrics: pedestrian fatalities, violent crime, property crime registered sex offenders, and law enforcement staff, standardized to a per 10,000 residence rate. And to celebrate the spooky season, Knights of the Jack in the Santa Monica Mountains draws crowds with its elaborately carved and illuminated Halloween pumpkins. From creative portraits of Hollywood stars to dinosaurs, aliens, and even Disney princesses' pumpkin carvings. Yeah, the, uh, the trail is amazing. The artistry, the creativity, it's uh, really a sight to see. And I think that uh, this, along with all of Halloween, it really lets everybody be a kid. The kids love it, the adults love it. It's a lot of fun. I really like the Knights of the Jack because it was really interesting to see all the talented artists around here and like things that you would never expect to be done on a pumpkin of all things. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was really cool to see all the, all the art that they can make through this. 
The event uses between four and 5,000 pumpkins for the exhibit, and it takes around 25 minutes to traverse the course. Ultimately, everything that's on the trail is made of jack-o'-lanterns. So whether you're walking through the dinosaur land through the Jurassic period and you're looking at a triceratops or a T-Rex, they're all made from jack-o'-lanterns. And that's everything out on the trail. So stay safe on Halloween and don't forget Knights of the Jack Halloween display runs until November 1st. Christina Corona, NTD News, Los Angeles. And FTX founder Sam Bankman fried testified on Thursday at his fraud trial without the jury present. He says that lawyers at his now bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange were involved in key decisions at the heart of the case as he sought to distance himself from responsibility for any wrongdoing. Here's a report. Lawyers for Sam Bankman fried in his fraud trial were seen leaving a New York courthouse on Thursday after the FTX founder finally took to the stand to defend himself. In his testimony to the judge, without the jury, Bankman Freed sought to distance himself from responsibility for his now bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange by pointing fingers at FTX lawyers. The 31 year old former billionaire responded confidently to questions from the defense side. Bankman Freed said FTX's lawyers were involved in crafting its document retention policies and setting up a system under which the company's customers deposited their funds into an account at his hedge fund Alameda. He said they also took part in crafting loans that he and other executives took from Alameda. But on cross-examination by prosecutors, he often struggled to point to specific conversations in which lawyers approved his actions. U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan said several of Bankman Freed's responses did not directly answer prosecutors' questions, saying, quote, The witness has what I'll simply call an interesting way of responding to questions. Kaplan had ordered Bankman Freed to give testimony without jurors present so he could determine which portions of it, if any, would be admissible as evidence. Prosecutors have said Bankman Freed should not be allowed to suggest that the lawyer's involvement in decision making showed that he lacked criminal intent. Bankman Freed is accused of stealing billions of dollars from customers. He has insisted he acted in good faith while running FTX and has pleaded not guilty to seven charges of fraud and conspiracy. Bankman Freed is expected to testify to the jury on Friday. Kaplan said he would decide then whether jurors could hear his testimony about lawyers' involvement.